Now to the latest on the COVID-19 pandemic. The World Health Organization says an Omicron subvariant is now the most dominant strain in the U.S. and could drive a new wave of cases. Let's bring in CBS News medical contributor Dr. David Agus to talk about this and to answer your medical questions. Uh, all right, Dr. Agus, so what can you tell us about this latest? I can't remember. We're, we went, it's like the original, then Delta, I know. I then Omicron. We Omicron. I thought we were off Omicron yeah. onto this other one, but now Omicron is resurgent. Right, and this is, I mean, this is, if you had to come up with a name for a variant, this is the perfect name, XBB.1.5. It's okay. by far the most <laughs> Why is that infectious perfect? variant. Yeah. I think he's being it's by sarcastic. Far the most infectious. Oh. <laughs> Okay. It's by far the most infectious variant we've ever had. So much so that it was 4% of cases beginning of December. And by the end of December, it's over 40% of cases. So tremendously infectious. Although there is no data that people are getting sicker from it. And there's no data yet that it's evading vaccines, despite what some of the media has reported. It seems that the vaccine T-cell responses are still protective against serious illness and hospitalization, which is very powerful and very heartening in many respects. Okay, so on to the questions from the public now, and it fits right into this. Uh, this person wants to know whether or not the vaccines that are being developed now are specifically targeting XBB, the variant. Well, it's a derivative of Omicron. So the Omicron bivalent booster, which came out in September, um, will target this and give some protection to it. It's not perfect. You can still get sick, but it will be a mild cold and flu-like uh, symptoms. It won't be serious, which is key, and no hospitalizations. It enables us to live with the virus. All right, this question comes from the grandparent of an infant. The baby has COVID, and they're curious about any special precautions they should take. Just make sure the baby gets enough fluid. I mean, you know, when you have a fever and, or you're coughing, you use up more fluid and you need to replace that. So don't let the baby get dehydrated. Use uh, antipyretics or anti-fever medicines like Tylenol if needed. And unfortunately, there's really no other treatment I would give to the baby. And just make sure you look out for symptoms. Some babies can get very sick. It's very rare. But if they, have, if they are, obviously they need to talk to their pediatrician and there are treatments. Out of curiosity, uh, Dr. Agus, if you're caring for a baby who has COVID, and this happened with my cousin, two-month-old baby, um, you know, obviously you don't put a mask on a baby. What are the precautions that other people should take when they're caring for an infant that may be ill? Yeah, that's a great one. I mean, yeah, the, the infant gets it at daycare and comes home and the parents are working and don't want to catch COVID. Obviously, the parents should wear an N95 mask Aww. when around the child as much as possible till they're no longer infectious, which is a day or two past resolution of symptoms. Not easy, but certainly important if the parents don't want to get that COVID. The next one is about the flu. This person was diagnosed yesterday and is taking Tamiflu. They want to know when will they stop being contagious? Uh, so a day before symptoms with the flu, you're contagious, and it classically lasts for five to seven days. Tamiflu is amazing in that it takes away symptoms and you start to feel better sooner, but you still can be infectious. So what is said by the CDC is classically, you wait a day or two until resolution of symptoms totally, and then you can go out. And that's going to be five to seven days, even if you're on Tamiflu. You'll feel better, but you're still infectious. Hmm, good to know. Dr. David Agus, thank you.